Hey everyone, I'm Nathan, and hey, has this ever happened to you? You're sitting there watching Drawfee when suddenly a frog gets sexualized? So Ribbit Ranger appeared in the Drawfee episode, Character Complication Drawing Challenge, and immediately the internet was ablaze. I've seen so much fan art on Twitter that was really cute. It was just such a funny way that he came into existence. I knew I wanted to draw fan art of Ribbit Ranger, but not only that, I wanted to put him on a ranch, you know, serving romance novel vibes. And since he's on a ranch, I decided to go ahead and include every single Drawfee cowboy that's ever been drawn, kind of. That's pretty much it on the subject. Does anyone actually watch intros? Probably not. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, full disclosure, this is probably not every single Drawfee cowboy, like the title may suggest, but this is my defense. I did look through a bunch of videos, I did some intense googling, and there are just so many drawings that Drawfee does on a regular basis. I think we've all gone to the wiki and been disappointed with how empty it feels. But come on, there's just so many characters. It's really difficult for anyone to be doing that in their spare time is like categorizing all of the doodles, let alone the streams. So these are definitely the most famous of Drawfee's cowboys. But if anyone wants to make a collective list of every single Drawfee cowboy that has ever existed actually, I will gladly redo this challenge and I'll give it a title like for real this time or I actually do it. <laughs> right now I'm doing some sexy line art on River Ranger and I intentionally drew him at an up angle because Karina did that thing where she's drawing and then she deleted her art as you do and I really loved how he looked from the up angle so I just wanted to pay homage to that deleted drawing. He does look a lot like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle but I gave him a nose which might be cheating but I don't think so. I'm He's still very recognizable as Ribbit Ranger. I changed his shirt and made it just an open collared shirt so we could see everything that he's working with <laughs> underneath. Oh gosh. <laughs> now I'm doing some line art on the buildings in the background. I don't know anything about ranches. I've never been a rancher or a cowboy, but I just assumed, you know, red barn like things and they're cowboys so there are cows in the distance also i have him carrying the saddle and i don't know what saddles look like i didn't look up reference for a saddle i didn't want to know so i just gave it my best and he's just you know holding it off the shoulder it's you know ignore weight he's so ripped it's not even a problem for him <laughs> And this is where I start inking Zipper Cowboy. I love Zipper Cowboy. He debuted in the Emoji Mashup Challenge video. And for obvious reasons, I felt like he was a good compliment to Ribbit Ranger because Ribbit Ranger is very, um, you know, he just exudes this kind of energy. And I felt that even though we don't see Zipper Cowboy from the waist down, I just felt like I think he's a bottom. Okay, he was really fun to draw as a challenge because unlike a lot of these other cowboys, we only see him from the face, uh, which makes sense because it was an emoji challenge, but I got to kind of design his outfit. Um, and so I just kind of exposed his midriff and I gave him really tight pants, um, contoured the zippers around his pants. I had a lot of trouble with cowboy hats as always. It's funny because I always think that Jacob and everybody is going kind of ham when they're like, oh, I hate drawing cowboys. Hat. And now I'm inking Duke Ranchero. You remember Duke Ranchero, right? From the randomly generated character challenge? Duke Ranchero? I actually kind of forgot about this guy. Like the fact that he's actually, he looks scary, but he's actually not. He's pretty sweet and that he makes pies. All of that escaped me. Um, and when I start drawing him, I actually initially do it just based off of his design in the thumbnail. And it's not until I rewatched that episode that I eventually go back in and add the pies and other details. And I already like lightning put in my snaggle tooth fence. I really love doing this crooked fence and this wonky, crazy perspective to really kind of go down into the valley. And yeah, I'm working on Tiny Cowboy. Right now I'm working on Duke again and finally adding those pies, but I was working on Tiny Cowboy. It obviously, the most famous cowboy, I think, from Drawfee is Tiny Cowboy. Iconic and eternal, Julia was a genius <laughs> when she drew him. I knew I wanted him on this fence, playing with the perspective a little bit, not much. I wanted him to be recognizable, so he's still slightly in a skewed perspective, 
but I cheat it to make it make sense in the overall composition. Down in the valley, I drew Ass Cowboy from the Royalty Free Music Challenge. I don't remember the name of that episode, but it's the one where they're doing the music. And it was when Nathan drew a really good torso, but they thought it was an ass. And so he drew two characters, which both appear in this image, Ass Cowboy and Man Cow. Was that it? No. Yeah. I think that was it. Ugh. But it, he's a minotaur, and they are both in a duel, like a square off. So I wanted to pay homage with that here. So they're down in the valley. Man Cow is like, has his horns and is going towards Ass Cowboy. The other cowboy was just, I felt like it was looking a little empty, so I put him there. But then in this past episode that just came out this week, time of recording, the randomized theme and setting generator, there was a cowboy at the top of Julia's stairs that didn't, we never saw his face. And yes, he's wearing a white shirt, but I'm just going to say that that's him. And he's down there too. And that's who that other random cowboy is, um, retrospectively. And I'm just going to say that's him. It makes all our lives easier. I do some horse butt shading, and then after that, I do some rim lighting on ribbit, and then also some pectoral highlighting. And this is when I start going in on the background. I had already finished, you know, my sketch and my preliminary stuff, but now I was going in with my values. I don't start in black and white, I jump straight into color. Sometimes that works out for me, but sometimes it bites me in the butt. You can tell here I wasn't super confident with my colors right off the bat because I default to using a lot of adjustments layers to kind of feel my way out of how I want the image to look. I just start really rendering everything. I decide to make all of the buildings red because that just felt very farm and ranch like to me. I'm gonna add a lot more detail to the grass and stuff like that. I really love the atmospheric perspective that I had on these mountains. I love how blue they are. In the end it really is a very simple color story. I don't know why I was making it more complicated than it needed to be but really even though the grass is green really these like dark neutral-ish yellows and then the red buildings and then the blue mountains so like primary colors it's very obvious in hindsight but in the moment I was like purple mountain majesty the mountains have to be purple for I don't know uh, but I threw that aside and went with what was actually working in front of me also, I drew this a second ago and it sort of flew by, but when I did the dirt road that Ribbit Ranger and everyone is kind of riding on that led to the barn with all the cows outside of it, that was such an aha moment for me. And it speeds by so quickly. I don't think it accurately represents the weight of how proud I was doing that road because I really had no idea if the perspective was going to work. And when I found out that it was sort of these rolling hills that overlapped each other, other, towards the front you can see in the foreground I was just really proud of that because it made everything make sense and I felt so big brain I was like oh my gosh it, it's working and I was able to hide the horse's bottom half of its feet so I didn't have to draw the hooves so that was kind of cool too also, doing the road made me realize how ginormous those buildings were in the background. Like they were big enough for giant people, especially if you just rewind a couple seconds back. Look at the road, look at those tiny little dots that represent cows, then look at these giant buildings. Oh my gosh, I don't know how it took me so long in the process to realize I needed to shrink them. And they're still very large, but this is the size that I end up going with and I do think they work. This wood pattern you keep seeing pop up is actually one of the default brushes that's on Procreate and I just use it and then use a transform tool to make a paneling for the wooden barns and buildings. Just because whenever I do anything, I'm always thinking about what are the textures. So making sure all of these brush strokes so the grass is grassy and the wood is woodish and the sky is airy all of those things. Then one of the last things that I do is add some highlights, add some shadows, really get my lighting where I want it to be. I debate whether or not I want to add sparkles or the sun or some flares, and I end up do going with some nice sparkles. I think they're a good callback to Karina's image that had sort of those glowing anime in love lens thingamabobs. I'm glad that I wasn't too precious with it and I did keep them in the image. And yeah, this is the finished drawing. So what did you think of this video? Do you have a favorite Drawfee Cowboy? Did I forget one of your faves? Well, yell at me in the comments below. What do you think of my rendition of Zipper Cowboy's ass? Do you think it's not fair that I made it more prominent than Ass Cowboy's ass? 
These are important questions that need answering. And hey, if you enjoyed the video enough to comment, why don't you like and subscribe? And if you really enjoyed the video, check me out on Patreon. Fun fact, I currently have like no followers. So if you just throw $4 at me, you get your names at the end credits. And there are no end credits. So you could be the first person to have your name at the end of the video. And it would be like a big deal because no one else has their name. Like it, you would be the first. Don't you want to be the first? Consider that. Just consider it. As always, my name is Nathan. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday, and I'll see you real soon. Bye!